Hey, hey Lana. Hey. Hey, hey sorry about that. Yeah, I okay. had to. I had to. I was like, I gotta go. Mike was <laughs> making the call because uh, his phone just decided to update, and then um, he said he had to wait for it to finish updating because he didn't want it to update, but it did it anyway. So. Oh, geez, nice. Yeah, that's always so fun. Anyways, is it just the well, two of us? Yeah, it's just gonna be me and you, and I'm I'm recording it. Um, okay. So that's why I show up as Dave Cotter. Um, I don't see anything. Oh, oh Dave Cotter. Yeah, yeah, now I do. Now the, I, do. I, I, I get to be the man, the myth, the legend today. All right. Good to <laughs> so Where is I, Dave? I thought about doing it in like a Sean Connery voice the whole time. Oh, um, come just, on. Just do it. <laughs> just so everybody thought Dave was uh, maybe Scottish. When, uh, right. <laughs> let me share my screen here. Where is Dave? Uh, I'm not sure actually, um, but oh. I know he's he's uh, not able to join us today. So he asked me to kind of run it. And we're going to go over probably what part of that conversation covered um, with Mike and and Mar and uh, Mike Mike Park and uh, Mike Dahl. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go over continuing through our uh, third party section on the phase to master checklist um and titles part of that so i think that's what that conversation was about maybe uh yeah we're we're waiting to pull title once he gets <laughs> he's working on the release mm -hmm. um and uh yeah he's working on the release and it, he uh, he's thinking it should be everything should be done in like two weeks maybe Okay. And so the appraisal is like two and a half weeks. And so uh, we're okay. waiting to, to, so we can get a clean title report, obviously. So, okay. All righty. Well, we'll, we'll kind of cover some of that stuff in the, our education meeting today. So um, last week, just a little recap, we went over appraisal piece, just, you know, when we, when we have the appraiser um, reach out for the first time, kind of conversation yeah, actually, we look to have. I actually used that uh, oh, cool. on um, Talk to Appraiser. Which deal was that? Any uh, sort of feedback or thoughts or how did no, it go? No, it actually, um, he reached out to me and then he texted me and mm -hmm. I got on the phone with him and it, it actually went really well. And so oh, cool. I was like, cool, you know? So, awesome. yeah. Yeah, it was good the, the the flow of the conversation was good and and so yeah yeah it feels like once you get into a rhythm it kind of they they open up a bit more on the answers and realizing that you know you're just kind of looking for information you're not trying to pigeonhole pigeonhole them into an answer on the you know what's the value today sort of thing yeah and um, he also you know just kind of already you know he's like yeah i'm gonna you know i need this for the uh i um because I'm going to do the do the cost approach and, you know, okay. as we kind of like threw out all, you know, some of the questions I would have, I didn't even have to ask. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because they, I mean, they're eager to get them done too. So yeah. Yeah. Once they yeah. start moving on it. Yep. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I'm glad that that worked and it felt mm -hmm. good and a uh, comfortable conversation. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to move to uh, insurance. So, um, you know, anytime that we have, and this really is kind of covering um, property insurance there, you know, there's going to be uh, situations where we've got um, life insurance also like on SBA loans. Mm -hmm. Now on those, um, we, you know, we don't get as involved in the SBA on the, on the life insurance portion because it's more between the, the uh, client and like the insurance provider and, you know, it's just things that we can't really um, be involved in for the most part, um, but on the property side, I mean, we can give references and get them in contact with an agent if they don't have one, but really this is um, for the insurance side. Once we've gotten past the, you know, during the kickoff call, we should be asking the borrower, hey, who is your contact for your insurance? Um, right, which for, I've been doing. Yeah, <laughs> good, good deal. Yeah, so we've got that information now. What we what do we do with it is kind of like the next, the next step here. Um, and if we can, if we can just kind of take control and run with this piece on it, it's best. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, 
sometimes the lenders will give, uh, you know, the, just give the direction and say, hey, you have us updated to the insurance policy. Sometimes they'll say, you know, we'll take care of it and do it all. Um, but really, um, the, you know, the main thing we need to do is first, you know, talk to the, talk to the lender and say, hey, what are the coverage requirements? Um, normally, they're, they're all kind of in the ballpark of it needs to cover, you know, either the loan amount. Um, or replacement you know, cost. Yeah, or replacement cost. Or, you know, it needs to cover the, the you know, the, the property value. Um, you know, they all have their own little uh, nuances to it as to what they're looking for. Uh, so you want to try and keep it as low as possible for the borrower. So if mm -hmm. they're coming back with a, well, it needs to cover, um, you know, it needs to cover the, you know, the full property value, um, then, you know, we need to kind of push back and say, yeah, you know, like, like you said, the replacement cost, like, well, what if it's covers your loan amount, but it also covers guaranteed replacement, you know, is that, is that sufficient? Cause you know, obviously, you know, on some, on some of these deals that could make a, an impact on, you know, what they're, what they're paying for a premium. Um, Ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, if we just want to first kind of make sure that the borrower's got sufficient coverage. We don't really want to try and, you know, guide the borrower and say, hey, you've got too much coverage. Let's lower that. Um, right. You know, maybe give them the heads up, make them aware of it. Um, but, you know, we don't want to tell them, hey, we're going to request to have your policy lowered because there's, there's, you know, there's reasons that they set it what it is and, and, and all that good stuff. Um, with the insurance piece of it, that is something that I am I am like very very familiar with. Oh, okay, because, cool. Because yeah, I had to do that. Well, I did it. I was an admin right at first for American Life, and mm -hmm. then so I dealt a lot with the insurance, like renewals and mm -hmm. you know just making sure I know you know. The, the the you know the insured and the, and the property and then the coverage and then the mortgagee and you know okay. and and the dates and all of that you know and then when I moved over into uh, the loan side hmm. that was one of, that was one of my deals I had to do was you know I handled all the insurance so I'm I'm pretty pretty familiar with all the insurance pieces of it so okay perfect yeah. okay cool so we'll 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 still go over it just kind of high level yeah. mostly just to make sure we're on the same page and then also you know, mm -hmm. we're we're going to use the the these for um Rec you know, i keep future. forgetting we're recording <laughs> that's okay <laughs> keep my mouth shut <laughs> no no don't no no add anything because obviously i need to know what you know so no. you know if there's something that you don't know and I know it, I can share it. And if I don't know it, we'll go find an answer. So, <laughs> right, um, right. but no, no, it's good. Um, but yeah, cause everybody's kind of coming from a different background on, on, on this stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, so you understand like lenders have all sorts of different re requirements and each lender is going to have, that's obviously, you know, each lender is going to have their own policy and procedure on how they want to see that coverage. So first really just kind of confirm with the lender, Hey, what's your policy? Um, what do you want to see? Um, and then reach out to the insurance agent um, and get get copies of the policies and and you know you can kind of do that either in either order really. Um, if the borrower does not have insurance, uh, we've used Greg um, Budiak uh, in the past. You know, just recommending him to to uh, clients to say, hey, um, do you you know do, if you need a, a, an insurance guy, Greg can can do a good job. He's normally pretty quick. Um, but you know, just, uh, somebody we've been using. Um, okay. and then also, you know, we need to make sure that we've kind of got the, the breakdown on the different types of insurance. So typically it's always through the same agent, you know, everybody kind of prices and packages together. Um, but you know, if it's a construction job and, you know, if one, you know, if the, the, the workman's comp, the hazard or the builder's risk might be covered by not just you know different agent or different insurance agents, but they might be covered by um, the the different um, you know the different parties involved. You know you could have the GC carries one of those insurances, the the uh, client carries one of the insurances, and obviously you know workman's comp is probably going to be the, the the client, but builder's risk um, could could go different ways. Um, so just you know good to have a breakdown on all those contacts. Um, 
So, and probably should be adding this to the to the checklist, but you know, really once we've got the contacts for the insurance agents, we need to be relaying to them uh, what the mortgagee clause is gonna be for, for the lender, which you've probably very familiar with and, mm -hmm. and done yeah. that a, a hundred times. Yeah. Um, one thing that I have uh, found out that um, some lenders will want to be listed as mortgagee and some will want it to show as loss payee. So just Last make sure, page. yeah. So just make sure that we know specifically, you know, what what term they want to mm -hmm. be, you know, listed as, because, you know, just to save, you know, going through the hoops and sending it back and hearing no. Yeah, no, and no. so I, what I do is, um, I don't know if there's, I always request both, mm, you do okay. mortgagee and loss payee. So I don't know if that's, I if don't know. They, if they will and they're able to, I know some insurance agents will kind of say, well, which way do you want it worded? Um, you know, it's, you know, I would, yeah, I would definitely find out from the lender specifically which the way they want it. If the agent will add okay. both or list it both ways, that's even better. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, you know, that that's uh, um, kind of each, it, it seems like, you know, there's a little nuances within the insurance as to, um, you know, how things are, are listed out and, and how the lenders want to see it and specific coverages and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, um, so once we've got the got it updated, we just return it to the lender and and kind of check it off the list. Um, but that's that's insurance seems to be something that always pops up towards the end of the the process. So if we can be ahead of it and just kind of get uh you know you know get an understanding of it up front, it kind of just saves time in the back end of a you know mm -hmm. the you know it's 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 not a long process to get it done in most cases. But if we leave it to the to the last minute, it's probably guaranteed that it's going to be the thing that, you know, both the agent goes on vacation or something holds us up and, you know, it could add, add a day or two, which, you know, obviously we're all about subtracting. Day well, or two not only that, I've run into like, you know, well, just for example, um, Bert Garcia with uh, the Filibertos. Mm -hmm. So I called the agent and yeah, yeah, you know, he seems very lackadaisical. And then mm -hmm. I had emailed him. I still mm -hmm. didn't get anything. I called, I enlisted Bert. I'm like, Hey, you know, and so he, he reached out and he waited two days for, you know, the insurance agent to get back to him. So then he finally sent over the COI and I'm looking at it and the dates are, the dates of her coverage were expired. So I like, had to uh -huh. tell Bert, I'm like, you got to go back to them. This, these, this is no good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you know, and then that's, yeah. you know, and that's taking an extra day so I can understand towards the end if you're going through, and it seems that insurance companies tend to make, you know, make mistakes like that or they'll put oh, the yeah. mortgage G clause in there but they won't check check any box you know and then you got to send it back and it's just so back and forth yeah um yeah. so yeah and i could see where that could hold things up toward at the end if it's not addressed you know you know what you might have uh, just nominated yourself for is for fleshing out our insurance agent um and insurance check uh, list process here so it sounds like you're very thorough on it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh so, yeah yeah no i know yeah it's it's definitely yeah we, we we you know the the insurance the insurance piece can definitely um you know there's just so many minor nuances on it that you know yeah. the, the lender comes back and, and says well you know the 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 date's a, a day later than we're planning on closing so we got to hold off you know which you know makes sense uh, but yeah. yeah expired is even worse <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> so um but yeah, so it sounds like yeah, if we, maybe we do. We should flush our insurance agent um, checklist section off a, a, a bit more um, for just you know s you know specific spots to review possibly, and 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 making sure we're kind of reviewing it before we send it to the lender wouldn't be a mm -hmm. bad thing. Um, mm -hmm. to, oh, know, I always yeah. review it. Oh, good deal. Okay. Good oh deal. yeah, it's just it's just that's the in, habit in I've nature. always been yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, next section is purchase contract. Um, got this in the in the third party section because it you know it really involves a lot of third parties. Um, you know it's going to involve you know any sort of buying agent, selling agent, um, and and uh, you know and 
title company, obviously. Um, so it just kind of falls into this third third party uh, section. But when we're when we're getting um, uh, purchase contracts, we want to make sure that they're signed and executed by everybody. Um, you know, normally the purchase contract n isn't the major issue on this. It's normally any sort of like addendum to, um, you know, we want to make sure it's fully signed and executed. Um, obviously fully signed and execute purchase contract is important though. Um, but sometimes the, you know, they, they make a change and they just rush it and just say, okay, it's, it's getting signed. Let's move ahead with this. Like, well, you know, until both are signed, um, we're just hoping that that's what we're, we're working with. So it's important to just make sure everything's signed. Uh, if not request it, um, you know, most of them can be signed in counterpart, but, um, just signatures on everything. Cause that's something that could, you know, it, it could just delay it at the end. Um, so, um, when you're going through it, um, the, the purchase contract, obviously purchase price is important. We just want to make sure that jives with everything else we have. Um, you know, if, if the, the, borrower the loan amounts you know for a purchase of you know two million um and our purchase contract shows 2.1 million um you know that's that's important there's obviously some sort of either we're on the wrong page or some sort of counter offer addendum that was that's missing out um you know and that's that does get covered in the kickoff call um you know as to when we're asking title on the if we've got title on the kickoff call um you know what how many addendums to the purchase contract are, are there because they should be kind of like the center center point for purchase contracts. The, you know, the realtor should be, um, any sort of addendum should be going through title. So they should be aware. Um, but it's just, you know, good to make sure we've got purchase price and make sure it jives with every, everything. Um, so confirm the address parcel number, uh, uh, parcel against assessor. Um, this, uh, you know, this is important because, Title, um, title should be checking this up front, but I have seen situations where, um, you know, we get to a point where, you know, a, appraisal is being ordered or something like that and not everything's correlating. Um, so since we've got the information up front, the purchase contract's pretty detailed as far as, you know, what the, the, per, the uh, address and the parcel number are, um, it's good that we just kind of confirm it with county records just to make sure that everything lines up. Um, and if not, um, you know, why doesn't it, you know, it's just something that we, we can review. So we, we should just a, not a, not a bad thing to double check on. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the nice things about getting a, a purchase. At least the, the property is kind of firmly identified up front. You know, if it's a refinance, we're just kind of going off of the borrower's address and, you know, most of the time that's accurate, but, um, you know, there's, you know, always the question of does it include this parcel or, you know, is that, you know, extra lot, you know, part of this. So, <clears throat> um, so it's good to review the purchasing entity. Um, you know, it, make sure that the purchasing entity is kind of lining up with um, what we expect to, to see as the buyer. Um, you know, on, you know, example is the, Mantric deals we've had uh, in the past. On this one, I think it was pretty. It was pretty smooth. They started with the right entity, but on one of them, um, you know, it's a borrower that has quite a few entities. They, they kind of just started with, uh, um, you know, one entity is buying it, um, but on all the the documents they were sending over, it was for two entities. It's like, well, okay, do we need to have this purchase contract updated? Um, you know, it, because right now we're we're you know, the agreement is only one of these entities is buying it. Uh, and then a long, long run on that one, it turned out they wanted to make a, a tick agreement, um, which is just kind of a, a whole new kind of structure and setup to purchase the property, um, which involved those entities. So um, it's just good to just, you know, you know, clarify, it's something we can clarify on the kickoff call. Um, you know, if it's not lined up, um, just one of the questions we, you know, we're asking is how are you taking title on this? Um, then that way we're, if they come back saying, you know, entity ABC is how we're taking title and the purchase agreement shows that to entity XYZ is purchasing it. We know we've got a problem. Um, the other thing at, at the, you know, at this time it's good to kind of assess, you know, look on the, you know, corporation commission, is it a new entity? Does it actually exist? Um, you know, make sure that, that that's already been set up. Um, cause that could, you know, obviously it's something that needs to be done before, 
the loan uh, can close is that it needs to be up and up and running. Um, so just kind of flush out the who's buying it um, and, and all that good detail up, uh, you know, at this point. Um, also then assess the, or uh, review the, the title and escrow agency. That information should be included in the purchase contract. Um, you know, the, it's, it's always in there. It's just, you kind of have to hunt for it sometimes. Oh, um, no, I, I've already yeah. asked you that. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's in there though. Um, and then it's good to just call them right away. Um, just to, to, you know, let them know, Hey, we're representing the, the purchaser, you know, helping them with the financing. This is the role we play. Um, you know, we can, in our, in the last page of our fee agreement, there's a, um, uh, 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 borrow authorization for disclosing information. I, I don't think I've run across a, a title company yet that really wants that, but if it's in there, it's, it's there. Um, you know, that sometimes they won't talk to us until we've provided that. Um, but it's good to uh, reach out to them up front because you might find that that purchase contract, um, you know, says title company A, um, and then you reach out to them and title company A says, yeah, no, we're not doing this one. And you find out that it's because counteroffer one uh, says the counteroffer is we want to use title company B. And at that point, you know, title company A is out of the picture. We don't have counter offer and uh, we're talking to the wrong title company out the gate. So um, it's just good to, you know, one, just make sure that, you know, they're working with us from the out, out the gate. Uh, and then two, that they are actually still the active title company on it because, you know, they counter offer to change title companies uh, and we don't get the counter offer, um, you know, that we're, we're kind of, you know, barking up the wrong tree on title agency. Um, so, um, if the contact information for the title company is no good, um, you know, reach out to the the borrower um, and get the the updated contact information. Uh, normally, on on something like that, I would go to the the borrower, um, and then if I can't get a hold of the borrower or the borrower's non-responsive on it, I reach out to the borrower's agent. Um, you know, then and they should be able to provide you that information. If there is no agent or the borrower's agent's non-responsive, which not likely because, you know, borrower's agent and that's their job. They have a vested interest in getting this done for, you know, earning their fee. But if for whatever reason you can't get a hold of either of those two, then I would reach out to the listing agent and just say, Hey, you know, tried these, you know, tried these others need to get this information. Please provide it. Um, you know, and, and, that kind of applies to everything with with the um, with the with the purchase contract and order of information. If you're not getting information, just follow that process for for any situation. Um, you know, t borrower first, borrower's agent second. Um, obviously, give them you know time to respond. If not, go to a listing agent um, and and get information from them. Um, so next section here is money go hard date. Um, that's something, um, confirm it with the borrower, but then also confirm it on the purchase contract. Reason is, um, have the borrower tell you, you know, it's, it's going to happen, um, you know, September 1st, then go into the purchase contract and look for the, the go hard date, um, and confirm that it's September 1st. Reason being is if borrower says it's September 1st, um, and then you look in the documents and it's, you know, August 25th. Um, borrower needs to be aware of that. Just, you know, mm -hmm. they might, you know, they, their expectation is September 1st, make sure that, 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 that that's what it is. Um, just to, to keep everybody on the same page. Um, there might be a reason they might come back and say, Oh, yep, it was in counter offer too. Let's me, let me send that to you. Um, or they might say, uh Oh, I miscalculated and that's good to know. So, um, just kind of a, a double check on it all. Um, um, that's and you know that's something that we do bring up in the, it should be brought up in the kickoff call too I believe it's a section in there for the go hard date um, now the go hard date might not be spelt out um, there might not be a section that says go hard date is you know XYZ um, it's basically the date that the escrow funds are no longer refundable to the borrower is kind of mm -hmm. what you need to look for like what event triggers that um, you know is it X number of days after the, the signing of the purchase contract, um, 
you know, is it um, a, a certain set time period where, you know, if the, you know, if the, the funds go, if the, sometimes it's just a standalone date, I guess is the way to say it, you know, it's X number of days after the purchase contract is signed. Sometimes it's also tied to, you know, the, the, the um, contingency for financing where we need to have an actual, um, you know, either term sheet or uh, commitment from a lender. Um, you know, that's something that that's can be tied to it. Um, you know, it just, you kind of have to read through the contract on it to understand it. it you know, th there's just so many different nuances on it. Um, but normally there's a, um, you know, a, a due diligence period where the borrower has, you know, X number of days to uh, review the property. Um, that at the end of that, it can sometimes trigger the go hard date. Um, there's a financing contingency that can sometimes trigger the go hard date. Um, it's just, you know, read through it and make sure you understand what dates and events. Uh, it probably wouldn't be bad to kind of just, and title companies should be providing this in some cases they do, um, or at, and sometimes in the purchase contract, there's just a list of events that are kind of just, you know, we need, you know, you know, the, it just lists the dates and it lists the trigger events of, of those dates. Um, so if, it, if that's in there, it's good to have and review it. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just kind of make one ourselves if, if you know, a title company can't provide it or, um, you know, agents can't provide it just to make sure that we're following along with what's going on there. Um, so then that, that brings us to the next section here, financing inspection contingency dates. You know, as I kind of stated, you know, it's in the contract, you just need to read through it. Normally there's a, a section that says financing contingency, um, you know, inspection contingency or due diligence contingency um, that, you know, we need to make sure that we're aware of all those dates. They're just super critical, um, you know, in just because of the fact that if there's a financing contingency and it's the 1st of September and we get the approval on the 2nd of September, then the lender can, you know, even if it's a day late, you know, first September to the second of September, the seller can walk away and say, sorry, you didn't meet the contingency. It might not be acting in good faith at that point, but, you know, that's per the contract, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, are you so, saying, when you say contingency, is that, or, or that's the approval from, uh, the approval, the loan approval, or is it, okay. Uh, it's gonna, it, it'll, it'll have, um, so they'll, they'll have different uh, verbiage in each contract. Some finding, financing contingencies will, will kind of state, you know, we need to see written terms from a lender. Some will say we need an approval from a lender. Um, you know, it, it really depends on the contract. That's why you kind of have to, you know, read through okay. each section and make sure that, okay, I understand what the requirement of this contingency is and I also understand what the what the what the date target is um, so and and some of them have hard set dates um, and some of them are um, you know set more off of uh, you know X number of days from this event so it could be you know for example it could be the the inspection contingency is a 30 day period after the escrow funds are, are received. Well, if they sign the purchase contract on the first of the month and they have a, a three day window to provide escrow funds, so they don't provide the escrow funds until the third, then they are in a spot where their, you know, their inspection contingency doesn't start till escrow funds are received, not the start signing of the, of the contract. So it's actually just been pushed out three days. Um, then there's also a, like a inspection period could uh, begin once the borrower's due diligence has been met, or the, I'm sorry, the seller's due diligence has been met, and the seller, you know, is provide, you know, isn't providing documents that could keep pushing out that date further and further. So sometimes, it, you know, th these dates are, uh, these you know, firm dates are being triggered throughout the process. Um, you know, and uh, I've seen I've seen some purchase contracts where the buyer is pretty savvy, and they actually have it set up so they they can really close these things like, you know, 
you know, it ridiculously long lengths of time after the signing of the contract, because it's certain events trigger the the next, uh, you know, the next due date or the next phase of it. So it's it's depending on how the contract's written. It's not always just necessarily a you know find the date and write it down. Sometimes it's a, okay, be aware of you know what's the coming up dates um, that are that are in there. Um, you know, and just keeping note of it and, and, you know, making sure that we understand what's going to cause it and trigger it and, and set it to, to the next. Um, so we, the, the things that we really need to be aware of though, are the inspection contingency. Um, that's going to be, and, and that's going to be the borrower's time frame to really, um, look at the property and do their, um, third party reviews, um, if there's, you know, appraisals to be ordered, phase ones to be ordered, um, things like that. A lot of times the inspection contingency or like the borrower's due diligence on the property will be tied to the go hard date, the, the funds, the escrow funds going hard. So basically the buyer gives them X number of days to review the property. If they don't back out within those, that time period, the escrow funds go hard and the borrower walks away uh, from the deal. They don't get that escrow fund back. So... Mm. Um, and then normally the financing contingency um, is sometime after the inspection period. Uh, normally, you know, like it, normally I'd say it's just on average, say 30 days for inspection in, you know, best case scenario, and then 15 to 30 days for financing, um, you know, depending on how aggressive the, the listing agent wants to be. So, um, you know, if we're going to, if we find that we're going to go, past those dates, we need to make sure that we've, we're, everybody's aware of it. Um, obviously mm -hmm. both hit those dates, but sometimes the, the listing agents make them very aggressive, um, you know, just to create a checkpoint where they'll say, you know, financing contingencies in 45 days from the start, you need an approval. Getting an approval on a loan in 45 days isn't always the easiest thing, mm -mm. Um, but they want to create a checkpoint where you have to go back and say, hey, we need to make an addendum to this where we need, you know, it might only be five days, 10 days additional to get this done, but mm -hmm. it gives them, you know, the opportunity to kind of back out if they feel as though the lender or the buyers kind of not going to get approved or just not really showing motivation. So, um, and then other key date to know is the close of escrow. So the, you know, the should be the closing date for the loan. Um, depending on the contract type, that's, you know, this is either going to be like a targeted date again, or it's going to be, you know, X number of days, typically X number of days after the financing date, or after the financing contingency is met. Um, so, you know, it's financing contingency to closing date. Typically it's pretty short, like 10 days. Um, they expect that, you know, once it's approved that it can turn around and close pretty quick. They don't want you, you know, sitting on your approval, um, just waiting to close. It's, you know, you've got the money, you've got the approval. Uh, let's go ahead and, and wrap this up. So, um, but you know, it's a, just a key date to be aware of. Um, so, um, then really, you know, after you've gone through, um, you know, everything, you know, if you've got any questions, uh, reach out to the broker, the, the buyer's agent, um, you know, obviously make sure the buyer is aware that you're reaching out to them or reach out to the buyer first and say, Hey, you know, this, these are the questions I have. I'm only going to get clarification from your broker. The buyer might already be, you know, be able to answer them or, you know, have knowledge of them. So, um, you know, just, uh, any, uh, anytime you're going to be reaching out to the buyer's broker, I always just make the buyer, the buyer aware, um, just to, you know, add a courtesy, you know, they're the, the, the broker's working on their behalf. Um, and the, the buyer probably wants to be aware of any conversation going on. So, does that, uh, any questions on uh, that purchase uh, contract section? No, uh, it's pretty, pretty clear. Okay, cool. Um, so title, so that's the other big third party piece that we run into. Um, and I've got it broken up into either if it's a purchase or a refinance, because those are the, you know, purchase, basically the title company is already picked. So um, right. makes it easy. Um, you're on that first call out to title escrow agency. You're going to be requesting a copy of the commitment. Normally on a purchase, the commitment's kind of already ready to rock and roll. 
um, because they know they're selling the property. They do their due diligence up front and get to work on it. And by the time it makes it to us, the, the tile commitment's already been done. Um, if not, it should be done soon after. Um, so uh, next, it's good to just confirm, you know, if you, we confirm this at a few points during the process on the kickoff call, first conversation with title, um, just to confirm that we have all the addendums to the contract. Um, you know, addendums are something that can come in at, at any point. So it's good. We should be made aware of it if it's happening, but an addendum is basically like a change to the original agreement. Um, so, you know, we need to tell them know, hey, we've got purchase contract and we've got addendum one. Is Are there any additional addendums? And they might come back and say, nope, or yep, there's addendums two, three, and four. Let's get those over to you. Then that way we're all working off the same document. We know, uh, you know, basically we're all, you know, working to the same same goal at that point. Um, so um, provide lender contact information to escrow. Um, normally I do this in an email. Um, that way you can send an email to uh, to title and to, to the lender at the same time and, you know, do the introduction. Um, let them know, um, you know, what the, the, normally they're aware what the loan amount is going to be. Um, but it's not bad to just reconfirm, um, you know, this, this is a lender, this is going to be the loan amount. Um, these are your contact points with the lender. Um, and then also it's a good time to prompt the lender to, to can you provide um, what endorsements you're going to require to the title company. That way, um, you know, the title company can add those endorsements up front. And if there's any additional documents that get requested um, because of the endorsements, um, they can, you know, we're asking for it early in the process. Otherwise, sometimes what happens is it gets to closing and then the, the lender reaches out to the title company and says, hey, we're ready to close. Can you add these endorsements? And guess what? Surprise, yeah. we need, you know, we, we now need yeah. other other things on the um, for the title, um, you know, so um, that's, you know, just a, a good practice, request the endorsements up up front. Um, and then I always, um, specifically ask, um, on, on with title, you know, it, you know, is there, is there going to be a survey required for this? Um, they don't always know. Um, you know, sometimes it's the answer is it depends on what endorsements the lender is going to require. Um, right. in some cases there, they fire back right away. Like, yep, we need it for this. Um, sometimes it's state by state, you know, sometimes it's, they just know because of the, there is no survey available for the property. Um, you know, so it's, it's just, it, it surveys are just one of those cumbersome processes that we just, you know, if we know up front, it's, it's, it's best. Um, so, um, now if we've got a uh, refinance, um, now on this one, um, we we try and get everything that we can over to a, a title company that we're familiar with. It just makes the process so much smoother. Um, there are some you know caveats to that. Um, you know, obviously, like, well, um, you know, Tom Tom Mantrek introduced us to Arlinda. Um, you know, we we weren't going to give him any pushback, and now we use Arlinda a lot because we find out how you know uh, efficient she is. So if we've got some a client that says no, I always use so and so for title. We're not going to argue. We're going to go with them. Um, you know, that being said, if we have past experience with that title company, we might prompt them and just say, hey, just so you know, you know, we have, you know, run into issues with in the past. Um, but, you know, the, um, you know, with that title company, you know, do you mind if we make a recommendation? If they're adamant, we're not going to get pushback. That's that's really ultimately up to them to choose the title company. All we can do is kind of just give, give recommendations. Um, and then we also, um, you know, you know, if we're going to go that route, um, we need to make sure that the, the lender's okay with us choosing the title also. Most lenders um, are okay. There's no reason that we can't choose the title company. Um, some have their preferred title company um, and, and they, uh, you know, there's the, well, I like to send it to so-and-so. Um, yeah, like Kevin... MacArthur. Yeah, Kevin's that. Yeah, Kevin's that way. You don't. You don't have to use this title company though. Just be aware of that we can we can push back and say nope. Sorry, we're going with this person. Um, that being said, there are some lenders that are adamant that they will not do a deal 
without their own title company, which, um, you know, there's, there, there's not a lot of them. Um, Jeff Frank is one of them. Um, but there's a reason for it. And that's because, um, he's, he's just got his whole process down to like a, you know, a machine it's, you put it, put in a loan request and out comes money. And right. we're, you know, we're not going to give any sort of pushback on that. Um, and I think American life was like that too. You guys kind of oh, yeah. controlled the title company. We did not allow yep. <clears throat> because we, just because we're, we were such a niche mm -hmm. and our, our escrow officer, she just knew exactly what we needed. Yep. You know, there was, it, it, she was very responsive and, yeah, so, so it was, we just used her all the time, so. Yeah, and those, and those, I mean, those are where we don't want to derail those processes, so when we know that it's good, we're not going to give any argument or pushback, um, right. <clears throat> but if it's a, if it's more of a, oh yeah, I, I use this person for my referrals to title all the time, um, they're my good buddy and they give me business, it's kind of like, well, you know, it's not, you know, we like them to get business. Obviously we want our lenders to get business. That's good for them. But our goal is the experience for the borrower. So that's what we're, you know, our focus is really, you know, is this the best for the borrower? Um, so that's what we need to be asking the question. So if it's, <clears throat> if it's a lender that's, you know, like American life, Jeff Frank, where it's like, sorry, it's a machine. You put in the request, the money comes out. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Stick to their title company. If it's the, well, I'm really chummy with so-and-so and, -so and like to work with them. It's like, yeah, well, but are they, are they really the best option? Um, which mm -hmm. we're not, we're not against, um, you know, looking into, you know, other title companies. So, you know, you know, if it's, if it's something where we can vet them out and make sure they're a good fit, you know, that's, uh, you know, that might be a, a good avenue to explore. Um, we've been put into that situation before and had horrible experience with title though. So, mm, um, yeah. you know, just cause, just cause they're your, your, you know, you know, <laughs> good buddy and you've known them for a long time does not mean they're a good title officer, unfortunately, in some cases. Exactly. So, um, <clears throat> so, um, so next section on a, on a refinance, um, we, uh, we need to make sure that we're giving the details to the title company for like account statement or note for the loan that's being paid. Um, it's really best to provide this information up front um, just so they can order payoffs, things like that, and get that rocking and rolling. We might get the payoff early, um, probably will, but we'll also know early if there's a, you know, like a prepayment or anything like that that's going on or, you mm -hmm. know, a miscalculated balance, something like that. Um, so when we're sending over the, the account statement or the, the, the note for the existing loan, also, uh, request the payoff authorization form. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, we need to have the borrower sign. That's normally always a wet sign document because the other lender wants to make it, you know, as painful as possible to request a payoff so they can slow yeah. it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, just normally always advise your borrower that's, you know, here comes the payoff authorization. Please print it and sign it um, and, and get that back to title. Um, Again, similar with the, you know, purchase process, provide lender contact information to escrow. You know, I just kind of send an, an email saying, you know, title meet lender. This is, this is what the loan parameters are going to be. Um, and also, um, you know, in this scenario, in the purchase, um, they know what the closing date is and the refinance, um, it, it, you know, it's a kind of a good idea if there's some sort of critical date um, to, just because we can keep reiterating it to everybody, just let them know, hey, you know, this is the loan. This is, you know, we plan to close this refinance on this date. Um, then out the gate, we're all on the same page as to, okay, this, this, you know, has, you know, 60 days to close or it's a fire drill in 45, you know, you know, what we're, um, you know, what we're doing here. Um, and then in that email, I always ask the lender also, hey, provide the endorsements that you're going to require. Um, and you know, same as, same as above with the, with the purchase, just make sure everybody's on the same page. And again, also confirm it, confirm it if a survey is required. Um, so if, um, so this, and then this next section screening, um, for title company officer, this is, um, if we have a title company we haven't worked with before. So, <clears throat> so, um, 
you know, if we are opening with our opening escrow with our recommended um, title officer, then um, you know that's really that's really the goal. Open open title with a lender or with a title officer we're familiar with. If the borrower gives pushback and says, "Nope, I really like to use this title officer," um, and and here's the reason why, um, which I think on that on that Mike Dahl deal. Um, he, I think he's, we're trying to figure out which title officer to go with on that one. Um, on that, he recently did a transaction and it might be in our best interest to open up escrow with his existing title officer. Yeah, um, that's what we discussed. Okay, just because she has knowledge of the property. Mm -hmm. Now, if I remember correctly, um, and I don't think that that it was a, a, a bad experience um, with his title company. But if I remember correctly, there was a little bit of um, difficulty in communication, just response times. And I could be wrong on that, but just be aware if you're going down that route, you know, sometimes we kind of have to bite the bullet on, we've got a title company that has knowledge of the property. They've got all the previously recorded deeds sitting on their desk and they're familiar with the property, which will speed things up. But at the, the issue is, you know, we're going to have, uh, um, you know, potentially some communication issues or, you know, slow down or, or whatnot. So it's kind of uh, the lesser of two evils. If you've got a title company that knows the property, it's pretty kind of a good situation to be in. Um, so just be aware on that one that, you know, be diligent on the communication and make sure they respond quickly. If they don't, then, uh, you know, pick up the phone or send emails or get Mike involved. Um, you know, and that's something that, that's key. If the, if the client says, no, use this title company and we, we're not getting traction with them, we need to go back to the client and say, Hey, you know, we're, we're trying to get information with the title company that you're, that you're working with. But they're not responding um, and have them nudge them along. Um, because in, at the end of the day, the, the, the borrower is paying the title company. So if they're not getting their money work, money's worked for the service, they need to be made aware of it, you know? So, um, but when we, if we get a new title company, you know, if somebody, you know, if, if Mike, you know, or um, Kevin says, nope, use my title officer, you know, it's good to just kind of just give them a call um, and just kind of flesh them out and, you know, you know, what they're doing. Um, you know, obviously the basic questions, you know, can you facilitate this type of transaction and closing in this state? Um, you know, sometimes we have borrowers saying, Oh, I, you know, like this title company, um, you know, out of Arizona, but the closings in North Carolina, it's like, well, they don't service that state. So obviously first thing, you know, need to meet, make sure that they can do it. Um, also it's good to just kind of ask what their current workloads like. Um, you know, it's something, you know, it's, workloads going to fluctuate for a title company. Um, but you know, if they're if they're saying that you know they're so swamped and overwhelmed that they really don't even have time to have the call with us, then that's kind of a bad sign from the start. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that we're not going into into something where we're going to be backburnered or you know one of a thousand in the queue. Um, you know, if they're if they're saying that there's any issues with workload, just asking well, what's the cause. Is it you know are you short staffed? Um, just in influx in volume, and it might be that we called them on the on the, the 29th of the month and they say, nope, it's, everything's good. It's just that end of the month, we are very busy, which title companies get very busy at the end of the month. So, um, you know, just, you know, be aware of that too. Um, also, um, are you planning any extended trips um, between now and close? So, you know, just ask them the question, you know, you know, is there any time where you're going to be unavailable? You know, it, you know, wouldn't, it wouldn't be uh, the first time, you know, had uh, a title company go on vacation uh, oh, yeah. around the time That's of close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, so that's, you know, that's important. You know, if they're, if they're going to be gone um, and they don't have a backup or a content, you know, contingency plan for while they're gone might not be the right fit for us on a, on a title company. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, net last question is, uh, would you be able to meet the time frame to close? Because you know, in some situations, if it's a 60-day close, that's more than enough time. Still ask the question. Um, but if we've got something that's shorter, you know, they might 
come back and say, nope, sorry, we're, you know, we're, it's going to take us X number of days to, to do our title research in that state or location, and we just can't facilitate it. Um, you know, in, in some remote counties and remote places, which a lot of the stuff we do is kind of big city, there's, but there are some spots where, you know, they, they literally have to wait a little extra time to, to get, uh, you know, information on properties. Um, and if they're not equipped to get that information, it could potentially, um, you know, derail the closing time uh, just because we can't get title on it. So, um, and then also the, the other piece to that is, um, you know, are, you know, are you, uh, um, you know, if we've got a, a borrower uh, out of state from the title company, um, most of them have a mobile notary, but it's always good to ask, um, you know, what's, what's going to be the arrangements for borrower signing if, uh, if they're out of state. Um, and some have like satellite offices um, or, you know, they should all be able to get a mobile notary for the most part, but it's just good to kind of confirm that it's, it's not something they're going to shoot down and just say, yeah, sorry, we're too small time to be able to handle that. Um, but I think that, that covers our title section. Any, any questions or anything like that on the, mm, on the title piece? No, I'm pretty, pretty well versed in that as well. As far as <laughs> Good deal. That goes. Yeah. Good deal. Are you, are you comfortable with the, the direction on that, on that Mike doll one, as far as getting title sorted out and squared away? Oh yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Cool. Good deal. Alrighty. Well, I think we're, ending a, a couple minutes early here yes. um but any any <laughs> anything else you want to questions you've been uh, wanting to ask or no i know not at the moment i um i know at some point i want to kind of go over i don't want to do it right now <laughs> <laughs> but the just you know what i'd like to do is kind of um over the taxes that we talked about yeah we'll, and, we'll um, setting up like some of the financial pe this financials because mm -hmm. i don't know if there's like different verbiage that's used for the same type documents oh and, yes there is yep <laughs> yeah and so it's like okay what am i what am i getting what am i looking at what am i looking for you know mm -hmm. so that's sure. yeah. that's an area where i could use a little bit more explanation on and maybe we can do it in a training I don't know okay no yeah no that's good information yeah so yeah we should set up something for kind of going over financials and also yes. uh, like a tax return review what what do all these crazy schedules mean um, mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah yeah definitely. that would be helpful for sure so anyway but yeah that's pretty much it so perfect uh, glad it's Friday. Yep, made it. Uh, made it to Friday, and uh, still got the rest of the day ahead of us. But oh, the yeah. weekend. But yes, yes. All right. Got any plans this Friday? I mean, this no. weekend. I'm gonna relax. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's all you can do, really. <laughs> yeah. Eat. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. I'm gonna. I'm gonna end our call then, and let you okay. get back to it. Right. And uh, I will, uh, I'll talk to you later. If you have any questions, just let me know. I will. Uh, but enjoy your weekend. Cause, yeah, we move into 117 degrees today. Yeah, it's going to, we got an excessive heat warning here, 80 it, degrees. It's, I was going to say 90 maybe? No, okay. 80, 80, 80 yeah. 85. <laughs> oh, geez. All right, I'm we're leaving. Actually, <laughs> yeah, we're actually <laughs> headed tomorrow to go up to, um, I don't know, you're probably not familiar with the air, but it's Albion River, and we're going to go up there and kayak that river on Saturday, so I'm excited for that. Oh, yeah, that sounds, yeah, cool and relaxing compared to yes. 117 here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> all, oh. Right. all right, Tom. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Right,